<laughs> so it's been a great couple of years for the Greens with the zero carbon bill being passed and the oil and gas ban coming into effect as well. But it's also been a bit of a bit tough with the um, the capital gains tax back down and some of the watering down of the emissions trading scheme um, with the agriculture sector um, and how they were included in that. Has it been tougher than you've expected for to be in supply and confidence? Again, I really am proud of what we have been able to achieve. Uh, incredible massive boost to protecting our wildlife and our nature with conservation funding. Revolutionising public transport with a massive funding boost in that area so people can get around when they need to. Making sure that we are um, solving waste and reducing uh, our waste as a country. Single plastic bags. People wanted that to happen and phasing that out. Um, moving into housing and securing a fund for more people to become ho homeowners with our $400 million Progressive Home Ownership Fund. And we are leading the charge in Parliament on making sure that everyone can live with dignity with um, overhauling our social security system. That's just a, a small example of the things that we've been able to achieve. And that's with eight MPs. And we know that we want to go further and faster and we would also if, um, when we get more MPs as well. We were under no illusions coming into government that government was going to be easy um, and the transition from being in opposition uh, into government has been as significant for us as the transition from being an outside of Parliament Party to coming into Parliament 20 years ago this week. Um, but, you know, given what Marum has said, I think f the fact that we've got only 80 MPs out of 120 and we've managed to do all of that in just 24 months I would say, imagine what we could do with just a few more. Come out of being that the Greens have had to swallow a number of dead rats um, and concede a lot of ground to New Zealand first, and the capital gains tax is probably the best example of that because you yourself, um, James, came out in the House and said the government that doesn't put this into place doesn't deserve to be re elected. So, how are you finding this um, partnership with New Zealand first? Do you feel like you're being overlooked a little bit too much? Not at all. And if you look at our polling, it's been rock solid the entire time that we've been here. In fact, we're the only party in Parliament uh, whose polls, are, well, we're actually marginally up on where we were on election night, but it's been completely consistent. And I, I think what that shows is that uh, people who support the Greens can see what it is that we're able to deliver. All of the things that we've been talking about in the 20 years that we've been in Parliament, we are actually getting done um, and we're retaining their support. And you have to remember, all of the things that Marama talked about only happened because all three parties in Parliament agreed to them happening. And the Greens have been uh, consensus builders forever, right? It's one of our core values. Uh, and so actually, um, needing to form consensus across government isn't uh, an unusual thing for us. But a lot of your members have been disappointed in the way that the Greens have, haven't accomplished as much as they thought that, they, that you should be doing. How are you dealing with that disappointment from some of your members when, as you pointed out, the Greens have actually done a, a significant number of things? Yeah, and those are important voices, not just our members, but people actually, who know um, that we're still, we've still got people who are not living with dignity. We've still got people who need to beg for food money. We've still got people not living in warm, secure homes. And so those are important voices. And our polling again, I think, shows that while we're getting stuff done, people also can see that it is the Greens who know we have to push far, faster and harder and keep going and make sure that we really are being transformational. And we will always honour those voices and stay accountable to pushing because that's what we want to. But some of those voices have come out and been quite critical. I mean, you've got Jack McDonald that left. You've got um, Gareth Hughes who came out and said that the government hasn't been transformational enough. Greens in that government, I mean, surely you must be a little bit concerned at the fact that some of your core support base is quite annoyed. If you look at our polling, more people support us now than supported us on election night. So yes, there are people who are disappointed that with only eight MPs, we haven't been able to go as far as we would like. We would like to go further and faster than we have been able to with only eight MPs. But when you look at what we have been able to achieve with only eight members of parliament, I would just say, imagine what we could do with just a few more. Mm. We have a fantastic track record in government and we're looking forward to campaigning on that next year. You say you wanted to go further and faster. I mean, capital gains tax, is that one of the things that you would have liked to see? I think, obviously, right, the capital <laughs> gains tax was the biggest disappointment of the last couple of years. Um, we still believe in it. Uh, we know that it would have um, helped to start to take some of the heat out of the 
um, property market and shift capital into the productive part of the economy. Um, it would have helped to address the uh, imbalance between people who earn and people who own. But, you know, ultimately, uh, as a function of a proportional representation government, nobody gets everything that they want all of the time. Staying on the sort of the tax and money side of things, the budget responsibility rules, which you co-wrote, um, you've recently been talking about, or your members have um, been talking about wanting to ditch them um, when it comes to next year's election. What, what's, where are you thinking at the moment on those rules? Uh, so we have a new fiscal um, policy, uh, which the Greens have been working through for some time. And uh, I think I said about a year ago that we do anticipate going into the next election with a, uh, with a, a different um, fiscal, uh, fiscal strategy. And actually, we said at the time that we launched the um, budget responsibility rules back in 2016, that you cannot uh, stay immune from the fact that circumstances have changed, that, that circumstances can and will change, and they have. Um, and if you look at uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing in government recently, you know, we've signalled that um, because we have the lowest cost of borrowing in all of recorded history, because we have a 30-year infrastructure deficit that is actually worse than anything that we had seen even when we were in, when we were in opposition, actually now is an excellent time um, for us to uh, invest in um, housing and in infrastructure, uh, public transport and, and other things as well, and, and we're actually starting to do that. So what, do, what will these new rules look like? I mean, at the moment there's the debt limit and the spending limit, are you going to see those pushed out further? So instead of having 30% of GDP um, constrained for spending and 20% of debt, the Greens want to see that maybe move to 25% debt, maybe 30% spending up to 35? You'll have to wait until the election. <laughs> so The election, so that's what we'll find out ahead of time. Yeah, I'm of sure. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we, I mean, we're still, I mean, we're still quite a long way out from the election uh, and we are putting together our campaign plans for next year. We're actually really excited about it. We think we're in great shape for the election. But the fiscal strategy that supports the things that we want to do, i.e., uh, support um, you know people into uh, into housing, especially those people who really don't have access to it at the moment. Um, really make sure that we're protecting uh, nature, continuing to lead on climate change. You know those are uh, the things that we have been doing in government that we want to do in our second term. Those will need to be supported with a fiscal strategy, and you'll see that as part of our campaign next year. Marama, your role is still um, very much holding the government to account. I mean, sitting here, we have the two sides of the Green Party: the ministerial side and the party side. How have you found it being essentially in the government with the party, but sort of being outside as well and holding them to account with some of the calls that you've been making? Has that been a bit tough? It's been really important, and for our members and our party, um, in this first term in particular, our first term for um, smaller partner uh, polit political parties, um, is a real tough one and I think so far we've been we've done really well to almost defy <coughs> ordinary political history mm. so maintaining an independent political position as a as a non-ministerial co-leader has been really important as well as I'm also able to help progress the things that we actually get done all of the things that I outlined I've been able to have a role in getting those through as well especially in the area of housing and welfare and so being able to uphold an independent political position is really important for us and I'm really proud of being able to have a lot to do with that role as well. Is there anything that you see um, the government not moving fast enough or not doing enough on from your perspective? Well I've been very clear um, publicly actually that we need to treat housing as a core public good, as a core crown responsibility. We would never imagine um, education or health being fully privatised, you know, let's just let's just put it over to private industry to supply those services to communities. We would never ever dream of that. And I want to see us return to um, treating houses as homes for people to live in and put down roots in and not just um, investments for wealthy people to make even more money. And so I will continue to outline how we can do that. For example, holding on to more of the homes when we do the um, Housing New Zealand redevelopments, the kind of order redevelopments on Crown State Houses. We absolutely, because of what James has been talking about in terms of borrowing and investment, we absolutely can make a decision to hold on to more of those homes and stop putting out to the open private market um, crown land and crown houses and you know those that's an area where I'm really happy to be able to talk about. So were you quite disappointed then with Kiwi Build and the way that that fell over? 
I've simply said that it wouldn't have been my big priority, that again, um, we need, I've been travelling around the country, Jason, for the last uh, six months, specifically talking to community groups, um, or NGOs, community centres and developers about our housing issues and what is needed and the solutions, a lot of it comes back to we need to correct the imbalance between landlords and tenants and we need to have available thousands more public, state and community houses. And do you think the government's doing enough there? I mean, you, you, want, you want your rent to own scheme Done in place. some good stuff. But um, have they done enough? Uh, not quite yet. And I think that there's not a lot of any politicians who would agree that we've arrived. We, we're not quite there yet. Um, but I am, I have to say, I am really pleased that this government recognises that we have a housing crisis. They're not afraid of the words, they're not afraid of the truth of what is happening for people who simply don't have a good place to live. So how do we and get to a point where we're not at a housing crisis? What, what, what does, it, what does a non-crisis look like? When everybody, whether they rent or own, has a safe, warm, affordable and secure home to live in, when they can put down roots, when we are not seeing children having to transfer and change schools several times in the space of a couple of years, when we are seeing people not lining up for food because their rents are so incredibly high and eating up a chunk of their income, when we are not seeing people go into debt to pay a power bill, and when we are not seeing ordinary New Zealanders, New Zealand people, carrying debt burdens rather than the crown. And those are the things that we that we can really aim for. So how far away are we from that point? That's a laundry list of yeah. things. We've got some great things that we've already done. Um, we have building more state houses than we have in the past 20, 20 sure, years. Sure, that's what the government's yeah. doing. I was asking Look, how far away you think we are to yeah. being not in a crisis from what you've described. In terms of time? Yeah. Oh gosh, look, this is, this is generational work. We're looking, well, I mean, we're looking at um, at least 50 years of degrading um, from, from the start of our proud state house legacy in this country, the first in the world to, to treat, um, to have the state housing legacy mm -hmm. and look at state housing. But that has degraded considerably over decades and successive governments. So it's generational work that we need to restore that approach. So how long is that going to take? I, I actually think we can um, we can uh, start to change the ratio in our uh, state housing developments within the next couple of years. I think that's something that can happen quickly. So it's, it's hard. It's hard it's to. Hard to it's, yeah. I mean, you know, given all of the indicators yeah. that Martin is talking about. It, it's you, you know I don't think that you can put a date on it yeah. and say this will be solved by you know no. 2022 or 2025 mm. or 2030 or, or you know absolutely but, um, but and part of that is because the things that we're doing in government are starting to shift the system and as that system shifts you'll see an exponential increase mm. um, but you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to predict precisely what that rate of increase will uh, will be I think I think as a country we should be aiming that this is the last generation that we will see increasing homelessness. I would like us to be able to um, address homelessness over the next generation, for example.